Today I'm going to show you how to convert one of these Equinox Color Raider uplighters into a fully wireless radio DMX version so you don't have to have anything plugged in, any cables linking them from one unit to the next. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to remove these four screws right here. For this conversion, you're going to need one of these radio modules. And this is a small 5 volt DC, 500 milliamp uh, module. And I'll put a link in the uh, description to these. Um, these are excellent. They work super. They're a little tiny unit. Let's open this up. Side. That's the radio module, really small. You can see it the size of my finger there. It's only about 18 millimeters wide. And uh, it has a button on there which you can set up the mode, which I'll talk about a little bit later on. But there are uh, multiple modes which light up uh, this LED here to indicate which uh, mode it's in, what uh, antenna unit. Uh, which we're going to drill a hole through and pass through, which connects onto the board just there. Wiring is really, really simple. We've just got a uh, ground plus 5 volt, and then we have uh, DMX pin uh, 2 and DMX pin 3. Let's uh, get open one of the colour radars and have a look inside. Now, once you get the lid off, You'll see there's a, a big aluminium heat sink around the outside here and what you need to do is there are screws around the sides here so it's just a case of getting the right screwdriver and just undoing these. We should be able to very carefully wiggle this and the whole thing will come apart. Now you'll notice an earth wire that's connected up here. There's also various other connections that go into the LED modules. Uh, you just need to be careful with those so you don't make those. But you can see here, there's this particular cable. This is a temperature management uh, management cable. And this runs round and connects into the board down there. And we're just going to wiggle it a little bit down here, this plug, and just take that off the board. It's a bit tricky to get in. There we go. So I've unplugged that. Right. Can you see, if I point here, there's a, there's a cable that comes up here. You have to wiggle these quite a bit to get them out. Sometimes they've got a bit of green uh, stuff on there just to stop them with being lived. That just makes it easier now for us to um, pop that to one side. Okay, so we've got the lid off now and we're just going to uh, familiarise ourselves a little bit with the inside of a colour radar. This little bit here, this piece of metal, we're going to take off and this nut. There's two screws, one there and one there, which is on the outside, just there and there. See them? And we're going to remove those and take those off because we're going to use this bit as the antenna hole. So starting from the bottom, we've got as DMX sockets, DMX in and DMX out. There's the three wires that connect to the motherboard, the main board. And this main board here has got a 12 volt supply that's fed from over here. And this is a mains to 12 volt um, step down switch mode power supply. Uh, the AC mains comes in at the top, I'll just bring that in there, goes through uh, a fuse in an IEC plug and that's a pass through to uh, the female and the male IEC. It passes through and it goes into the board over here and that's your 240 volts down here, there's a little fuse on board. Um, and this bit over here is the motherboard and on the motherboard it's got um, four channels because this is an RGBW module and these little four MOSFETs here that drive the LED. There's a microcontroller, this is a 32-bit um, little micro, I think it possibly is something like an ESP32 or something like that that they're actually using, a uh, crystal oscillator on board and um, up front we've got a display, a um, very simple LED sort of segmented display and some buttons and a microphone that's tucked in there as well. So 
gonna start off by removing the screws. Okay, and so now we've removed this, what we can do is we can unplug this little thing at the back here. We've got a space now. Now this space down the bottom here is where we're gonna locate the radio module. Let's bring that in. <clears throat> Excuse me. So right, so this is the radio module. I'm gonna flip this over and this is gonna fit right down the bottom, just there in that position like that. I'm gonna provide this as a 3D model on the actual uh, link that you can download. This is just a drilling template with some carpet tape on the back. And what we can do with this is we can stick this on the bottom of the colorator. And then we've got somewhere to accurately drill all of those holes. So they all line up nicely like that. So this is where this comes uh, really handy at this point. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna count one, two of the holes from the right hand side of the unit. So here's the uh, DMX side, upside down. I'm gonna keep, we're gonna count sort of one, two holes, and then we're gonna position this hole here over that second hole. So I'm gonna put that over there, and I'm just gonna get it lined up as best as I can, level as much as I can as well, and then just uh, press it down into position. So for this, we're gonna need a five millimeter drill bit for the bigger holes, and we're gonna need a three millimeter bit for the uh, outer perimeter M3 fixings. Okay, so we've got all those holes now drilled in using the template, so we can now move the template. You don't want any of the aluminium and everything getting inside the circuit board. So back everything up. We'll just deburr those and just clean up those, just make them a little bit neater. But it's, it's very close. So I'm gonna just open those two holes to 5.5. So what we're going to need next is we're going to need four of these M3 by uh, 18 millimeter at some standoffs. And these standoffs are six millimeter by M3. And we're also going to need some uh, M3 nuts as well. Now this is very delicate. You'll feel when it's secure and when it's not, because you'll be able to almost hear a little click. Sometimes you can't hear the click. It just feels like it's snugged in. And that looks pretty good to me. Just give it a little movement. Yeah, that's nice and secure. So the next thing we need to do is we need to get this antenna part. And we're gonna put that through this hole at this side. But as you can see, it's a lot bigger, a lot, lot bigger. And what we also need to do as well is we need to insulate this from the case. We're gonna get one of these rubber grommets and we're gonna use it in this hole. We're gonna pass this through, tighten this up and then that will give us a good insulation from the chassis. So we'll just check. We'll find a good connection up here somewhere on the chassis. Yep, that's perfect. Okay, so we are now pretty much there. We're just ready now to solder some wires on and we've only got four wires to solder on. If you look at the motherboard for the unit from above, you will see that there is a header here, an area where more than likely this would be the programming uh, port for putting the software on the unit. This pin here is a little plus symbol and this is plus five volt. 
and this pin at the opposite end just here is ground it's negative and yellow xlr cable is pin three white two and red is five volt there's quite a big regulator here five volt regulator now this thing here has got a peak current of about 1.5 amps and now if i've done some um, measurements on this i had a look at sort of what this unit is drawing on the five volt rail and um, it's drawing something like about 40 milliamps so it's actually very on top of the job so there's plenty of current there for you to uh, just pinch a little bit for the dmx module so i'm just going to put a little bit of flux flux pen on the board down there just to uh, make things just flow a little bit easier So our DMX uh, socket module, as XLR socket, has got very conveniently one, two, and three pins marked on there. So we just need to tin up uh, pad two and three, and then we can attach the relevant cables. So now we've got the soldering out of the way, we need to just reassemble everything side of these cables up a little bit i'm going to put a tie wrap around those um just a, a word as well try and keep your antenna as far away from the power supply as possible just sort of make sure any loops and things are down in this corner out of the way this needs to go into there down there and then over here we've just got the temperature sensor which we removed earlier on which is this one here. That's the infrared sensor that goes towards the antenna side. Bonus side note, fit some rubber feet to these they've actually got some uh, areas where you can thread and you can fit some rubber feet so they don't slide around it's just so much better so the moment of truth we've now fitted our radio unit and what we need to do now is put some mains on and give this a go so the unit's starting up everything's working as uh, as it should so what i do is i drive all of these units from uh, sound switch and I actually created a uh, a little unit like this which is the transmitter unit each one of the lights can either be a master or a slave you can also still use these DMX input and outputs because this will actually send the signal that it's getting over radio to drive all the lights well I hope you found this tutorial helpful um, if you want to convert your Equinox colorators to wireless DMX. Have fun.